Hi, I'm Kate from Daily Tarot Girl, and I'm so excited to dive into the Queen of Wands with you in this video. So this video is part of my Court Card Deep Dive series, where each video I dive deeply into one of the Court Cards. So before we dive into today's video, uh, I have a free gift for you. So I have made a Court Card Cheat Sheet and I'll give you a little peek of what it looks like. So this is my court card cheat sheet. And while we're diving really deeply into the court cards, it's also nice to have kind of the quick and dirty version <laughs> to print out and just have at your side when you're doing readings. So you have something to kind of jog your memory. Uh, so if you want my court card cheat sheet, I'm gonna put the link below to how you can, how you can grab a copy. All right, so the card that you see on your screen is from the Universal Weight Tarot, and I'm sitting by the fireplace for this video. I thought that would be really appropriate for talking about the Queen of Wands because she is very fiery and passionate. So the Queen of Wands is the Queen of the Suit of Wands, and the Suit of Wands corresponds to the element of fire. And think about how fire acts. You know, you can use fire to cook your food and to, to warm yourself, or fire can also be raging and destructive. So um, the suit of wands represents like passion, action, creativity. Um, let me look at my notes here. Passion, action, and energy. So a few keywords and personality traits of the queen of wands is that she is very energetic and alive. This is the kind of person where you meet and she just has that shine in her eyes. She's just glowing from the inside out. She's alive, she's passionate, she's fiery, she's very energized. She has that spiritual spark. She's very creative, she's action oriented. Um, so there's some people out there who are very creative and very spiritual, um, but they don't, they can't really get their shit together and get things done. Whereas the Queen of Wands is unique in that she is very creative, she's very spiritual, and she's also organized and action oriented and she knows how to get things done. She's also very passionate and intense. So she's the kind of person who, she doesn't do anything unless she's passionate about it. She's very inspired. She's really good at taking inspired action towards things. She is an outside the box thinker. She's very eccentric. She has an entrepreneurial spirit and she is a visionary. She doesn't really care what other people think of her and I think that this might actually be my favorite thing about the Queen of Wands. She's super independent. She's bold, she's brave and she's adventurous. So some symbols to pay attention to on this card. The first symbol, which is um, in some ways kind of one of the most important ones, is the wand itself. So the staff that she is holding. Now that represents the ability to direct her energy and willpower. So just think of like holding a magic wand. It's that ability to direct her energy and will. And that's what the, this queen is really good at. There are the lion's heads on either side of her throne, and then there's lions on the back part of her throne as well. And lions are very powerful, very regal and majestic, and those are all things that are associated with the Queen of Wands. There's also the little black cat at the front of this card. And cats are very graceful, they're very elegant, and they're very mysterious. And a black cat especially can be seen as like a witch's familiar, which gives this queen kind of a witchy vibe. And this queen is definitely a witchy woman. There's also uh, sunflowers on this card. There's, there's I think three sunflowers on this card. And the sunflowers are this sort of, um, I think of them as being this like extroverted kind of flower. They're, you know, they're flowering, they're in bloom, they have this bright, shiny, uplifting kind of energy to them, and they really respond to the sun's attention. All flowers and plants respond to the sun, but the sunflower especially kind of opens up and expands in the light of the sun. And in that way, 
This makes me think of how the Queen of Wands responds to attention. So just like the sunflower opens up and blooms under the sun's attention, the Queen of Wands will open up and bloom and really shine in her best way when she has attention from others. She loves attention. There's two main colors on this card, yellow and orange, and yellow corresponds with the third chakra, which is the solar plexus chakra. And that chakra is associated with your will in the world and your ability to direct your willpower. The color orange corresponds with the second chakra, which is the sacral chakra, which is kind of your, your lower belly area. And it's associated with creativity. So those two things, uh, willpower and creativity, really make up the backbone of the Queen of Wands. And again, she's one of those people who's super creative, eccentric, kind of out there, but she also knows how to make things happen and get shit done. In the background of this card, there's pyramids. And pyramids are a symbol of ancient power and mystery, as well as energy direction and alignment with the stars. So it's thought that the pyramids were used to direct energy, whether you're directing it upwards or bringing energy in. And they're all, the pyramids are also built in a certain way that they align with certain star systems. I don't know much about this, but I just think that that's a really interesting tidbit. And I have so much to say <laughs> about that because the Queen of Wands is really good with alignment she, she's good at taking action, but she's even better at understanding how things line up. So she's not just about being busy and taking action here, there, and everywhere. She knows how to be in alignment and how to take action at the right time period. And like the pyramids, she's really good at directing her energy. And she does have this kind of mysterious aura to her. So both the pyramids and the cat are kind of symbols of mystery and the queen of wands, it can be very mysterious when she wants to be. And then there's uh, also the leaves that are on the wand and her crown and these symbolize new growth and aliveness. So some things that the queen of wands is really good at, she knows how to tap into her creativity and passions and take action and make things happen. This is where she really shines. She's really good at exploring the unusual side of things and coming up with creative solutions. She is a true visionary who is highly creative and she's also very spiritually connected, but she doesn't really, she wouldn't describe herself as spiritual. She wouldn't call herself a spiritual person. Like she wouldn't have uh, spiritual books or quotes around her home. She probably doesn't do yoga or meditation, but yet she's a very spiritual person. She has this real mystical quality. Sorry, I just heard a weird noise. And <laughs> I think it's my cat doing something weird. Um, she has this like mystical quality and she's one of those people who's just like naturally spiritually connected without really trying to be. So that's why she doesn't really like identify as a spiritual person. The Queen of Wands is a real entertainer and she knows how to grab people's attention and hold it. And this is a really rare quality. There's lots of people that want attention, but they're not very good at holding people's attention. They're not that interesting. Whereas the Queen of Wands, she does crave attention. That's where she really blossoms is when, when she's getting attention. Um, but she knows how to grab people's attention and actually really hold it. So at a party, the Queen of Wands is the life of the party. And in fact, a party isn't a party without the Queen of Wands. A party without the Queen of Wands is just simply a gathering. <laughs> you will often find the Queen of Wands in the center of a large group, being kind of the center of attention. She'll be regaling everyone with her stories. She's a master storyteller. She's highly entertaining. And she has this electric sense of humor. She really like lights up a room. She knows how to draw people in and have them just like hanging on her every word. 
and she's especially talented at hosting parties. So she knows how to keep the champagne flowing, you know, keep the music going and um, really kind of keep the energy of the party high. When it comes to love and romance, she doesn't exactly excel in this area. So she gets bored easily. So she usually ends up having a lot of kind of short-lived passionate affairs. She seeks passion, excitement, and fire in her romantic relationships. And so because of this, she tends to kind of lose interest as soon as that initial romantic spark begins to fade, which it inevitably does in all relationships. So she's more into those like passionate flings and really exciting affairs as opposed to long-term relationships. If she does settle down though, it will be with someone who is kind of conventional and boring. So kind of her opposite. Um, someone who will like really let her shine and be the star. She can't really handle being with someone as bold and bright as she is for any length of time. Her relationships or her relationship will rarely be her focused because her career and her artistic journey always come first. So even if she does have a good relationship, she's probably not going to make that the number one thing in her life because she has other priorities. She hates the idea of being trapped. And so because of this, she kind of shuns the idea of conventional marriage or the, the institution of marriage. <laughs> she gains a ton of inspiration and energy though from her brief yet passionate affairs. So most people might feel drained by having a lot of brief affairs and a lot of people would find that a big distraction for them, um, but not the Queen of Wands. That's how she gets her energy. That's what she thrives on. She feeds on that passionate energy of an affair and then she directs that energy into her creative pursuits and her work. It, it, it fuels her creative fire. All right, so let's move on to my second sheet here. So when it comes to finances and money, the Queen of Wands is really good at making lots of money, but she's equally good at spending lots of money. And she usually spends her money on silly stuff, like really expensive crystals, um, you know, overpriced spiritual retreats, uh, shoes, like designer shoes and fancy makeup. She's very fashion forward. She's the most fashion forward of all the queens and she does spend a lot of money on her hair, her nails, her makeup, her, her clothes. But despite her reckless spending, she always manages to bounce back. So she never really hoards money and she usually completely forgets to save money but making money is just so darn easy for the Queen of Wands that she, she has absolutely no blocks whatsoever to making money. Um, she's really comfortable with charging for what she's worth. She's very comfortable negotiating contracts and, and demanding high sums of money for her talents. <laughs> she has no problem doing that. She isn't really materialistic though. Um, so like making money feels really fun to her and spending money, it's also fun, but it also feels just kind of like mundane, like easy come, easy go. Like it's almost as mundane as like sneezing to her. <laughs> when it comes to work and career, she is a natural problem solver. She's a really creative thinker and uh, she's a wonderful entertainer. So any profession where she can be creative and expressive is best for her. And she often gravitates to the unconventional, kind of unusual professions. And her independent street makes her a really good candidate for either self-employment or freelance, freelance work. You won't really find her having like a conventional sort of steady run of the mill type job. If the Queen of Wands is in a job like that, she will feel very frustrated and um, not very happy. 
She is the perfect entrepreneur and she really doesn't want to be tied down or beholden to anyone, which is why freelance and self-employment really work for her. She makes a wonderful actress, artist, or performer of any kind. She's also a really good event planner, so she really shines like doing like um, party planning, event planning, creating amazing festivals, concerts, and retreats. She's the kind of woman who uh, really gets these like wild out there ideas that other people may kind of raise an eyebrow at, but they actually usually end up panning out for the Queen of Wands. She's kind of like that sort of hippy dippy artist slash mystic who really has her shit together and gets things done and really knows how to make things happen in a big way. She longs to get out there and do daring new things and bust stereotypes and expectations. So in order to thrive, these are, these are the things that make the Queen of Wands thrive. Being on stage, <laughs> in front of an audience. This queen just lights up and flowers when she's you know, in front of an audience. She loves to be challenged, both creatively and spiritually. And she loves environments that are full of open-minded people and few rules and regulations. She feels very much at home when she's like at a festival or a party or some kind of event. She's very extroverted. So when it comes to things she doesn't like, she can't stand too many rules or regulations or institutions. And she can't stand, you know, the man. <laughs> she really doesn't like being labeled or put in a box. She also doesn't like feeling overcommitted or burdened in any way. And she does not enjoy caregiving. She doesn't want to be in a caregiving role. Motherhood isn't really her thing. So she will either forego this altogether and instead focus on her career, or her artistic pursuits, or if she does end up becoming a mother, she will quite often pass off most of the responsibilities of motherhood to another family member or a nanny. Uh, or like if you end up marrying, say, the Queen of Wands, <laughs> unlikely, but it could happen, um, the Queen of Wands will choose a partner who is like this sort of maybe kind of boring, sort of conventional safe partner who will be very responsible and they will do most of the parenting while the Queen of Wands goes off and, and kind of does her own thing. The Queen of Wands can't stand feeling stagnant or uninspired or stuck in any way. And she also hates groupthink and herd mentality. Those two things just like totally disgust her. <laughs> So let's talk about her dark side. So when it comes to the Queen of Wands dark side, she can be a little bit of an attention whore who needs like a really high level of excitement in order to feel inspired and energetic. She has a tendency to be narcissistic and self-centered with a pension for getting high on her own supply. <laughs> so that is kind of her worst quality is she can be kind of narcissistic and a bit of an attention seeker. She may try really hard to get people's attention and she may even um, kind of uh, be controversial just for the sake of being controversial and just to kind of stir the pot because she really thrives on attention. She might discard someone like there's like their yesterday's trash if they fail to worship her adequately and lavish her with enough adulation. So she likes to surround herself with people who uh, encourage her and inspire her and worship her. And if someone isn't worshipful enough, she has a tendency to kind of freeze them out a little bit. Remember, this is the dark side. This is nece not necessarily what every Queen of Wands type character would do, but this is just the, the dark side of this card. So some practices to embody the Queen of Wands. Performing in front of an audience is one sort of Queen of Wands-y activity. And for some reason in my notes, I've written Drag King. 
and I can't remember specifically why I wrote that in my notes, but I think I was thinking that the Queen of Wands is kind of the ultimate drag king because the Queen of Wands loves to be unconventional and to be really entertaining and out there in kind of a different sort of way. So she would make a good drag king. <laughs> um, so another practice to embody this card is paint a mural on your bedroom wall or your bathroom wall or your living room wall. Do something unconventional. Throw a themed costume party for your friends. The Queen of Wands loves throwing parties. Go clothes shopping at the thrift store. Write a zany stage play and cast your friends as the main characters. These are all things that the Queen of Wands would approve of. So some journaling questions for you. What part of the Queen of Wands do you most relate to? And if you want to share in any of these answers in the comments below, please feel free. Um, so what parts of this queen do you most relate to? Do you know anyone who's like this queen of wands? And which of her qualities would you like to cultivate in your own life? And which of her traits do you want to minimize or watch out for? I'd love to hear all about it. <laughs> so let me know in the comments, did you enjoy this video? Did you learn anything new about the Queen of Wands? What is something that surprised you about the Queen of Wands? So next time I'm gonna dive into the Knights and I can't wait for that. We're gonna start with the Knight of Pentacles. And don't forget to download your, uh, tarot court card cheat sheet. <laughs> I'll put the link below on how you can grab that. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned lots about the Queen of Wands. I hope you feel more connected to her now so that when she comes up in a reading, she's going to feel like an old friend. <laughs> and thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.